Good morning children. Today is the fourth lecture on the chapter Language of Chemistry. In this chapter, we are studying about chemical reactions. In a chemical reaction, the reactants combine together to form completely new substances called products. Students, chemical reaction do not occur only in a laboratory, but it can happen anywhere. For example, when we are cooking, breathing, when we apply glue to stick something, burn or obtain metal from its ore, etc. No matter what the chemical reaction is, it will show some visible changes like change in color or effervescence that is gases produced in a reaction, some light may be produced or sound energy may be produced, there may be change in temperature or maybe an insoluble product is formed when there is a reaction between two liquids. In the last lecture, we had studied about those chemical reactions which were characterized by evolution of gas. For example, when we added ethanoic acid to sodium carbonate, we got sodium ethanoate, carbon dioxide and water. That is carbon dioxide evolved as a gas. Second equation that we studied was when HCl was added to calcium carbonate, powdered chalk. So we got calcium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. The next example was when we added concentrated hydrochloric acid to sodium carbonate. The products were sodium chloride, water and carbon dioxide gas. There are certain chemical reactions which are accompanied with change in color of the products. So now we study these chemical reactions which are characterized by change in color. To start with, have a look at this picture. The first picture was taken around the year 1886 and the second picture, the green one, is something close to these present times. Both the pictures are of the same Statue of Liberty which is located in USA. This statue was made by the French and gifted to America. This Statue of Liberty was made by copper metal. The copper metal is reddish brown in color. But over the years, this copper has reacted with the oxygen, water and carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere and has formed a new product which is hydrated copper carbonate. And this hydrated copper carbonate is green in color. Hence, today when we stand near Statue of Liberty and take a photograph, the Statue of Liberty seems to be green in color. A similar reaction occurs when iron rusts. Iron oxide forms on its surface, that is oxidation takes place, causing iron to turn a reddish color. Now, we will perform few experiments in the laboratory and observe color changes taking place during these chemical reactions. The first experiment that I perform over here is between potassium iodide and lead nitrate. So now you can see here I have taken lead nitrate. Okay, potassium iodide, a clear solution. Now, uh, with the help of a spatula, I take small amount of lead nitrate in a test tube. You can see the lead nitrate is white in color and it is crystalline. Next, with the help of a dropper, I add few drops of potassium iodide to the test tube. Observe the change in color. Yellow precipitate has formed. So, in this reaction you can see the color changes from white to yellow. Here is the chemical reaction. Lead nitrate PbNO3 whole twice plus 2Ki potassium iodide forms 
lead iodide which is yellow in color and potassium nitrate which is colorless similar color change is observed when potassium iodide is added to lead acetate both lead acetate and potassium iodide solutions are colorless but on mixing a yellow precipitate of lead iodide is obtained potassium iodide plus lead acetate forms lead iodide which is yellow color precipitate and potassium acetate now the next experiment here i will heat copper carbonate and observe the color changes you can see over here this bottle contains copper carbonate now this is lime water lime water chemical name is calcium hydroxide next you can see over here the spirit lamp dropper spatula and test tube holder i light the spirit lamp i take some amount of copper carbonate into the test tube have a look at the color of copper carbonate this is dirty green in color i attach the test tube holder to this test tube also i keep ready another test tube which contains some amount of lime water now this is the delivery tube one end of the delivery tube is in the lime water the another end will be fitted into the test tube that contains copper carbonate and thereafter we start the heating when we heat you can observe the test tube which contains lime water some bubbles come out of the delivery tube and you can see the bubbling takes place right it signifies that some gas is coming out from the delivery tube and passing through the lime water now this gas that comes out is carbon dioxide there is a chemical reaction between carbon dioxide and calcium hydroxide that is lime water here you can see i am continuously heating copper carbonate and the color is changing from dirty green to black and you can also observe the change that is happening in the test tube containing the lime water initially lime water was colorless now it is white i shake a little the test tube and i find that yes now the color has changed from dirty green to black color now this this black color is the color of copper oxide in this particular experiment you are observing two color changes number 1 is green color copper oxide changes to black copper oxide and the colorless lime water changes to milky white because of the reaction between carbon dioxide and calcium hydroxide that is lime water carbon dioxide has evolved from copper carbonate the last experiment for today is thermal decomposition of copper sulfate pentahydrate blue color crystals shiny blue color crystals of copper sulfate pentahydrate small amount of copper sulfate pentahydrate is taken in a china dish and placed over tripod stand with a wire gauze the purpose of wire gauze is to evenly distribute the heat the source of heat is the bunsen burner you can also replace bunsen burner with a spirit lamp now the heating is taking place from below and you can see the blue color crystals will change color and the texture also changes the crystalline nature becomes amorphous and the blue color changes into white now this is white powder of anhydrous copper sulfate so now we write down the chemical reaction cuso4.5h2o copper sulfate pentahydrate on heating gives copper sulfate plus 5h2o 
Now, this experiment has a very interesting observation. When you pass hydrogen sulfide gas through copper sulfate solution which is blue in color, a black color precipitate of copper sulfide is obtained and sulfuric acid is also formed which remains in the solution. We end the class with this assignment. Thank you. Bye-bye.